ओके सर फ्रॉम द लास्ट क्लास दैट सेकंड सर्किट विच यू गिव कैन यू डिस्कस द लास्ट टू आंसर सर ओके uh i think you want that last uh, last question right yes sir uh, let me have that question first okay i think this was the last question which question are you talking about uh, this one the before page the second one second one that 500 500 ohm okay okay that one look just this one okay 500 ohm right yes yes so just i will tell now we can't do much with it root is going to be made let's say no continue my class yes sir i had just like okay so i'm uh, redrawing the circuit and solving it completely or let me show it to you here only चेंज so i think everyone has got the equivalent resistance i have solved it also here over here yes sir yes. everyone should have got the equivalent resistance as uh, what was the equivalent resistance over here yes it's 2 2000 by 3 right and i had also gave you uh, found out the total current drawn from the battery which was 4.5 milliampere right Yes, zero point zero zero four. Okay. So see, uh, even I have turned on my camera now. I think every everyone shall turn on the camera. See, so the second question you had to find out a one, a two, a three, v one, v two, v three. So we have already computed the value of a three. A three we got as four point five milliampere, which is the total current. The total current drawn will be the same as A three. Then, if for A one, the branch through in which A one is located, in that branch, the potential applied is three volt. To this complete branch, the potential supplied is three volt since it is in parallel. So complete potential is three volt, and it has a resistance of one thousand ohm. So we can obtain the current as current I will be equal to V by R, which will be three divided by one thousand. So three divided by one thousand gives it three milliampere. So three milliampere of the current flows through the uh, A one. so you can say i1 will be equal to 3 milli ampere okay. i think everyone knows how to convert it to milli mahak yes sir 
You know how to convert to milli amperes? Sir, into 10 to the power minus 3. That is, you convert from ampere to milli ampere. Oh, sorry, milli ampere to ampere. Okay, okay, see here. Here I am getting this answer as 3 by 1000 ampere. Right? So, how many milli ampere will this be? So 0 0.003. That will be the ampere. You divide it thus, you get it 0 0.003 ampere. Right? Okay. Now, if I want to state this in milliampere, so what will be the answer? 3 milliampere. 3 milliampere, right? So that is what I am asking. This will be 3 milliampere. Multiply it by 1000, you get in milliamperes. Okay. Now, for I2, you can get I2 directly by subtracting it. I2 can be obtained by subtracting the total current from the total current, which was 4.5 milliampere. If you subtract 3 milliampere, so the current I2 will be 1.5 milliampere. Okay. So the readings A1 and A2, this is your A1. This one is the reading A1. This one is the reading A2. Now, I want the reading V1, V2, and V3. Okay. So, Shreyasi? Shreyasi? Yes, sir. I want to find out the value V1. So, for calculating the V1, what value of current should I take? One point five milliampere. Okay, I two is one point five milliampere. Okay, multiplied by thousand, two thousand the resistance, and the resistance is two thousand. Okay. So what current? Uh, how much answer you are getting? Yeah, how much answer you are getting? Sir, so it should be... No. How much? Multiply it and see. Sir, so I've converted and then multiplied 2000. So then we get 10 volts. 10? You get 10. Yeah. Okay. First of all, convert this milli to ampere. And you need to multiply 1.5 into 10 to the power 3. It will become into ampere. Okay. 10 to the power minus 3, it becomes ampere. And then multiply 2000. So this can be written as 1.5 multiply 2, which will be equal to 3 volt. Okay, and which you could directly get that since the points P and Q, they are connected to 3 volt. Okay, so therefore V1 will also be 3 volt. Now the values V2 and V3 needs to be cal calculated. V2 is equal to IR. The amount of current which is flowing through this 500 ohm is I1. So I1 multiply R, which is 500. I1, we have 3 milliampere. So this should be 3 into 10 to the power minus 3, multiply 500. Multiply, you get here, 15 into 10 to the power minus 1, which is 1.5 volt. So V1, V2 will be 1.5, V3 will also be 1.5 since both the resistances are equal. 
and if you add 1.5 plus 1.5 you get 3 volt that is the equivalent potential or equivalent voltage got it yes sir okay Medha Anthony, have you understood this question? Are you are muted? Medha Anthony, you are muted. So? Yeah. So, have you understood this problem? K. Subhash Sarvik? Sir, I came right now. I was saying what we have to tell V1, okay. I understood. Okay. And Manan? Yeah, I did this already, sir. Okay. So that's good. I think most of you have done this question. You should just match your answers, whatever you have got. Okay. Now let's move to the last uh, topic of this chapter. And the last topic is electrical energy and power. Generally, we expect one question from this topic of electrical energy and power. A one question at least is expected from this topic. The reasons behind this, that this is a totally new topic for you, electrical energy. And also, it has a wide range of applications. It is quite, electrical energy, this topic is quite related with our everyday life. Why we talk our everyday life over here? Uh, up to now, we have computed energy, like we have computed potential energy, kinetic energy. So, Tanishka, what is the formula of potential energy? Sir, is it MGH? MGA or MGH? MGH. MGH, right? So this MGH is the potential energy. But what type of potential energy is this? Is there any specific type? Sir, it is not related to electrical uh, energies, uh, electrical potential energies. So it is not related to the electrical potential energy. So what it, is it related to? This is your gravitational Gravity. potential. Yes. Okay. So this is your gravitational potential energy. Right. Now in the electrical energy also we had studied somewhere as two terms. We have studied two terms. One is the potential energy. You have studied about electric potential energy so this is electrical or electric potential energy and electric potential these are the two terms that have been studied up to now electric potential we have studied okay and the relation between them we have studied as v equals w by q right Do you remember this formula? Yes. Electric sir. potential. Yes. So sir. Manan, what Manan, what does V represent? Potential difference, sir. Potential difference. Or electric potential, we can say. Yes, sir. We can also call this as electric potential difference. Okay. Can we also call this as the electric potential energy? Tanishka, Tanishka, can we call this V as electric potential energy? Not too sure, sir. Not too sure. Okay. Uh, Vedika, can we call this V as electric potential energy? No, sir, I think. No. 
So where do we get the formula of electric potential energy there? <clears throat> See, V is electric potential and not the potential energy. Just fit it in your mind clearly. V is electric potential, not the potential energy. Okay. And W here, what we have written, is the electric potential energy. W means the work done. So as we have studied that work done and energy, they are equivalent. So therefore, W represents the electric potential energy. Okay. So how can we obtain the formula of electric potential energy then? Electric potential into charge. Yeah, electric potential into charge. Just transpose the terms. You get Q into V, which is equal to W work done, or we can call it as electric potential energy. Right? Yes. And we, we know that energy can be changed from one form to the other. Right? Energy can be transformed from one form to the other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this, this potential energy, it can be transformed to heat energy. It can be transformed to light energy. It can be transformed to various other forms of energy, which we are utilizing every day. For example, the current that is running through the wires, it is utilized to run the bulb, to glow the bulb. It is utilized to run the fan. Okay. It is utilized to run the electric heater. Okay. We see the conversion of electrical, electrical energy into various other forms. So therefore, we need to change this formula a little bit. Okay. Since in our everyday life, we are dealing with currents and not, we are also dealing with the charges, but it's better to understand it in terms of current. Okay. So how can we replace a charge that is Q in terms of current? IT. I into T, right? As current is defined, if we know the current, current is defined I equals to Q by T. So therefore, Q can be replaced by the formula I into T. So electrical energy will be given by the formula here. You're replacing Q by I into T. So you have the formula V into I into T. That is our electrical energy or electric potential energy. So understood this formula of electric potential energy, how we obtained this? Okay, but we will be using various other forms of it. Various forms of this we will be using as to understand the various concepts. We will, every time we will not enter into the charge concept. Just by the concept of the current, we will obtain the electrical energy. Okay, now let's see. We also want something else. Suppose you have a wire and it has some resistance R so that when current flows through it, so that suppose it has the potential V and current I flows through it for a certain time T. Okay. So how much of the electrical energy will be utilized by this bulb? If, or it right by this resistance. Can we obtain the formula of energy? We just have obtained that the electrical energy will be given by the formula V into I into T. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now see, uh, we need to measure the potential, we need to measure the current, but there is one thing which we can measure once and we do not need to measure it, measure it every time. So what is that? That is the resistance. Okay. The resistance will remain the same. So if we change the formula in terms of resistance, the same formula we want to change in terms of resistance, so we can replace either V or I. If I replace V by the formula, V equals IR. 
Okay. So we will get another formula of energy and hence the electrical energy which is consumed by this resistance will be given by IR multiplied by I times T and hence we have I squared RT. So I squared RT will give us the electrical energy consumed Okay. Wait for one minute. Okay. See, the energy is given by I squared RT. This formula is also called a Joule's law of heating. It's called Joule's law of heating. And it gives us the amount of heat generated when the charges or when the current is flowing through the resistance. Right? So see here, we have obtained this formula where resistance of this wire is almost going to be a constant. And uh, whatever time for which we are running, so that time we know. And obviously, the energy now depends on the current. How much of the heat will be generated? It depends on the current. So from this, we can figure out that energy generated by, or energy not generated, energy utilized by this resistor will be directly proportional to the square of current. This energy is directly proportional to resistance. And it is also directly proportional to the time for which the current flows through it. Okay. So this formula is your Joule's law of heating. Right. Now, so can we say that there has been a change of energy? The cell was having chemical energy. Okay. We measured it in terms of potential energy which was given as Q into V. Then, when the current flows through the wire, then that energy is only getting converted into heat energy. Right? So, I hope now everyone can remember this formula of I squared RT. Yes, yes sir. So, for what we need to use this formula? to the amount of heat energy that is dissipated through this resistance or how much of heat energy will this resistance give out. Okay. When we know that the current I flows through the resistance for a time T. Okay. Now another transformation can be there. We can either use this formula in terms of current or we can use this formula in terms of potential also. Okay. If we replace this current, so replacing this current I by V by R, as we know I is equal to V by R. So making this replacement will again change the formula. It will make the formula of energy as V squared by R squared times R into T. One R gets cancelled and therefore we have V squared by R into T. This is the energy. Sir, will they ask derivations in exam? They will not ask the derivation of this energy in exam, but there is no sure you can be asked. And also one more thing, do not go what is asked, what is not. You should know and from these concepts, you shall be able to utilize that where you will be using I squared RT. 
where you will be using v squared by r into t and where uh, you will be using v into i into t. All of them will give the same answer, right? But provided you know how to use them. Like I will show you some of the questions where application of the different formulas will give you different, different answers. Okay. Just wait. I am giving you the, uh, some of the questions. If you apply V into I into T, you will get a different answer. If you use I square RT, you will get a different answer. If you use V square by R into T, you will get different answer. It doesn't mean that the formula no. is incorrect. Yeah. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Like uh, in the I square RT formula, R is directly proportional. But in the second formula of that, R is indirectly proportional, inversely proportional. Okay. And See, then the I don't understand. How to like, uh, like where to make use of it then? Like if the current, uh, sorry, resistance is uh, indirectly uh, proportional or directly proportional. Yeah. So that is what we, uh, that is why I'm discussing all this. That's why I'm discussing all the three formulas and I'll tell you where to utilize them. Okay. That is what, if you understand just this concept, your question, if your question is clear to everyone, so then you can uh, utilize that which formula will be applicable. Okay. Now suppose uh, if you change the battery, if you are changing the, in most of the cases, we do not change the battery. We make the battery, we keep the battery as same, right? So if the battery is same, so in that case, your V is constant. But resistance is, and if, if V is constant and you change the resistance, the current will change. So in that case, you will be using the formula V square by R into T. Okay. Also, there are various... Okay, let's... Uh... So we see some of the questions where we can apply these formulas. Okay. Let's see uh, if you are able to get them. So I hope all these formulas are clear to everyone. All the three formulas. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Now just I'm adding a small thing, a small more thing, and then we will move on to the formula. Okay. And that small thing is power. We know power which is given by rate of doing work, W by T. W we have calculated as V into I into T. If you divide this by time, you get V into I. Okay. So similarly, you get the other formulas also, I squared R. Similarly, you get the last one also as V squared by R. So from the formula of energy, if you remove the if you remove time, if you remove time from the formula of energy, so you will get the formula of power. Okay. You obtain the formula of power as W by T, which is V into I, I square R and V square by R. Okay. So from this, one more, uh, you have another set of formula, which is for power. And what is the SI unit of power? Watt. 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 Okay, SI unit is Watt. And what if you have power multiply time? What quantity you will get if you multiply power with time? Energy. 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 So just with this, let's try to solve some of the problems. We start first with NCRT problems. I think you might have done them. After NCRT, we'll, we'll solve some other questions. Electricity chapter 12. 
right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, chapter number 11, sir. Chapter 11. Okay, whatever it be. I think it's like after light and human eye only. I just wanted to guess the page number. Okay. So, this is the chapter. 212. Uh, Yeah, just see the first question. See, first question. A piece of wire of resistance R is cut into five equal parts. These parts are then, these parts are then connected in parallel. If the equivalent resistance of this combination is R dash, then the ratio of R by R dash each. So, I think most of you might know the answer. So, how many of you know the answer to this question? Since it's in the NCRT, so I think you must have solved it. No one? Okay. So, let's try to solve this. Will you solve or shall I start solving? Sir, one minute. Yes, sir. One minute. Okay. Just uh, take one minute. Solve this. Uh, and then I will check. It requires a lot of concepts. However, it's an MCQ, but still it requires a lot of concepts. Okay, so you have solved. One by twenty-five should be Anyone else? Sir, twenty-five. Sir, even I got twenty-five. Sir, twenty-five. Twenty-five. R by R dash. Okay. So let's see who is correct and who is false. Okay. So I'm solving the complete question. And just go by the question. So going by the question, you have a wire of length L. So this is the length L of the wire. Length L, it has the area of cross-section A. And it may have some resistivity rho. It has the resistance R. The resistance is given by R, which will be equal to rho times of L by A. Okay. Now, when it is cut into five equal pieces, so each part will have the length one by five. L by five, yes. Okay. Each part will have the length L by five. And hence, since the resistance is directly proportional to length, so each portion will have the resistance R by five. So is this understood to everyone? Or is there anyone who has not understood why I am taking the resistance of each one as R by 5? Okay. Now you have to combine all of them in parallel. You have to form 
all of them in parallel. So all the five resistances, they are connected now something like this. One, then you have the other, then you have some other. So all of them, they are now connected in parallel. Okay. So this one is R by 5. R by 5. So in this way, you have this all in parallel combination. Now, equivalent combination in the parallel R dash will be given by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus so on it will be given. Substituting the values, you will get 1 by R by 5 plus 1 by R by 5 in this way plus so on. And you will have here 5 by R plus 5 by R and this you will be getting 5 times. Okay, How many times we get this? 5 times. So we have 5 by R multiplied by 5 which is 25 by R. So this is the value of R dash. Right? You want the ratio R by R dash. Okay, so how can we obtain the ratio R by R dash? We have our R divided by R dash we want. Okay. Sir, okay. R dash is equal to 25 by R. No, no. Yeah. So, is, if you yeah, place... This is, yeah, this is 1 by R dash equal to 25 by R. You okay. send the R that side and then it's... Yeah. Sir, in the first so, formula too, you wrote R dash is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. Yeah, first one. Okay, here only. So, this is 1 by R dash. So if you transpose the term R from here, you get R by R dash equals to 25. Okay. So the correct answer is 25. R by R dash is 25. Okay. R dash is small. R is big. So however the question was an MCQ, it carries some weightage. Okay, uh, second one you can answer uh, orally. What will be the answer to the second one? I R squared. I R squared. I R squared. Okay. See this one then. An electric bulb is rated 220 volt and 100 watt when it is operated on 110 volt the power consumed will be so what will be the power consumed so this question will identify that whether you know which formula is to be utilized, which formula is to be utilized from here. Okay, in this question, it will be clear to you that which formula should be used. Sir, I once again got 25. Okay, you got 25? Yes, sir. Okay, I also want to see your solutions. Sir, I cannot on my camera today. But I can orally tell you if you want to. Okay. I have written you know. it. So. Okay, okay. So, I will also solve this. Just I am expecting some more answer.
So I got fifty watts. Mm -hmm. You got fifty. Yes, sir. Okay. See, you uh, you are given two things, right? right. Yeah. You are given voltage, 220 volt. You are given power, which is 100 watt. You are given a voltage as 110 volt. And you are supposed to compute the power. So even I got 50 watts, sir. And the options you have, Either you go by the formula power is equal to V into I. Either you go by the formula power is equal to V squared by R. Okay. And you have another one, but that you will not utilize as nothing is given. If you use the, want to use the formula I square R, so you will, you will not utilize this as you are not aware of I, you are not aware of R. So this formula is cancelled out. You can't use this formula. Right? So you will be getting different answers. If you use power equals to V into Y, you will get some different answer. If you use the formula power equal to V square by R, you will get a different answer. So are you get, that is why you are people are getting two different answers. Okay. So which answer is correct? So we use V square by R. Why, why not V into I? Um, I is not given. So where R is given? R is also not given. So we can cal we can um, substitute R is power. No, wait. R is time. Sir. R is? No. So we can find out R, right? So we can also find I also. So is it because they didn't give us if it if it was series or parallel? So we don't know if I is um constant or not. But then resistance is constant. See, resistance is constant. Resistance will not change. If you change the operating voltage, current will change. Okay. So if you apply for this, uh, for this you know the value of power, you know the value of volts, and if you apply, you compute the value of current, right? But that value of current will not be the same when operated at 110 volt. When operated at 110 volt, it will give you some other value of current. So therefore, you will not utilize the value of power equals to V into I. Okay. So I think, uh, uh, Vedika, you are getting your answer? Yes, sir. The question which you asked earlier that where we use the formula V into I. And where we use the formula V square by R. Okay. So as somewhere you say it is directly proportional to R. Somewhere you say it is inversely proportional to R. So here we utilize the formula V square by R. As, uh, so here compute the value of R. Or you can directly say from here. You can directly get that. power is P1 is directly proportional to V squared. Okay. Or you can say P1 is proportional to V1 square. P2 is proportional to, let's say, let's obtain it directly in this way. So your first power P will be equal to V squared by R, which we know from this power is 100 watt and V is 220. So we can write 220 squared divided by R. This is your first power. The second power P will be given by 110 squared divided by R. So hence, both the R will cancel out from each other and you will get a simple expression as 100 by P will be equal to 220 into 220 divided by 110 into 110. So you get this as 4. And hence, power will be equal to 100 by 4. That will be equal to 
25 watt. So how many of you got this answer as 25 watt? Sir, I got it. Sir, last year. Anyone else got this as 25? Yes, sir. But we can still make use of uh, P is equals to VI, right? No, we can't make use of it because if you are using it, in the first case, the current will be different. Okay. In the second case, the current will change because you are changing the operating voltage. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, if so, the... Uh, yes? Sir, I use the formula V squared by R. Um, I thought that R is constant in both, so I can use that. Yeah. So, you can use this formula. You can go step by step. Actually, I have done uh, not done all the steps. So, you can compute it like this. Power is equals to V squared by R. So, you first compute the value of R as V squared by P. Right? So, V yeah, is 220. Is yeah, you will get the same. 220 divided by power, which is 100. So, you will get is 484 ohm. This will be the answer. Then the second step, again, you compute the power by the formula V squared by R. Power you have to compute and V is 110. So you can put 110 times 110. That's 110 square divided by 484. 20. And this you will get as 25. Okay. Sir, I, I read it a little differently, but I got the same answer, sir. So how did you do it differently? Can you show your answer? Uh, uh, can you send the answers to me? Uh, Dhanunjay sent the answer 50. Amatur Rahman sent 50. So, Amatur, have you understood this question? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I think now all of you have understood where to utilize which formula. Now, let's see. A similar question. Again, apply to up uh, you, you need to apply your brains. Fourth one. See the fourth one. Two conducting wires of the same material and equal lengths and equal diameters are first connected in series and then parallel in a circuit across the same potential difference. The ratio of the heat produced in series and parallel combination would be. Yeah, uh, anyone got the answer? Think uh, think for it. Take take your time. The important is that you give the correct answer.
ये अंदर का या एनीवन गॉट दी आंसर सर आई एम गेटिंग आर स्क्वायर सर आर स्क्वायर सर आई गॉट यस सर आई गॉट फोर इज टू वन रेशियो फर्स्ट वन ओके नो लेट्स सी सो आई थिंक इट्स टाइम फॉर आई आई शुड सो सी द टू कंडक्टिंग वायर्स दीज स्टेटमेंट्स दे हैव सेम मटेरियल इक्वल लेंथ equal diameter this give you that the two wires they have the same resistance okay then first connected in series so if suppose the first wire has the resistance r and they are connected in series so the equivalent in the series combination they will have the resistance as 2r and when they are connected in the parallel so if you connect them in parallel the equivalent resistance in the parallel combination will be r by 2 are you getting this yes sir okay by taking 1 by r equals to 1 by you you solve you get your answer as r by 2 this is also a shortcut if both the resistances are equal the equivalent resistance in parallel will be r by 2 if there are three resistances and they are equal the equivalent resistance will be r by 3 okay. so you can consider this as r equivalent will be given by r by n if there are n resistances connected in parallel so uh, resistance in the parallel combination will be equal to r by 2 now i want the heat produced they are connected across the same potential difference so this statement they can they are connected across the same potential difference we know the value of r so this gives us we should utilize the formula of power as v squared by r So the first one in the first case, power P one will be given by V squared by R S. The second one, P two, will be given by V squared by R P. And if you find out the ratio, series to parallel, power in series to power in parallel, will be given by V squared by R S. Divided by v square by R P, so both v square and v square get cancelled. You have resistance in parallel divided by resistance in series, and resistance in parallel is R by two. This is divided by series, and in the series you have two R. So you get your answer as R by two multiplied by one by two R. R and R gets cancelled. You have the ratio as one by four. Okay, so your correct option will be option number C. Okay. Okay. Understood, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So in the next class we will do a few more questions. Okay, I think you are getting close your concepts. Every question is important. Every question has some logic, even if it is MCQ. So